One of the questions that I always get asked is which end user switch is right for my organization? And in today's video, that's what we're going to go ahead and we're going to answer for you. And if you're new to my channel, go ahead, click that subscribe button. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. So in today's episode, what we're going to cover is the desktop switches from Cisco that end users would typically plug into. So that's going to be the 9300, the 9300L, the 9200, the 9200L, and then that Catalyst 1000 that kind of came out a little while ago. And I'm going to take you guys through what I think most people care about those switches. And then hopefully by the end of today's video, you're more knowledgeable and you can kind of go ahead and figure out which switch would be right for your organization. So let's jump. So the way that I did this is I created this matrix in PowerPoint and I put all the switches from the 9300 down to the, down to the Catalyst 1000 on here. And as I talk through the features underneath it, we're going to light them all up. So at the top, I've got a list of some common features. Number one, all these switches, they're switches. They can do layer two. Number two here, PoE plus. All these switches support PoE Plus on there. That's 30 watts of power. You really need that today, guys, because all the new access points that are out there need more than the 15.4 watts of standard PoE power. All the new 802.11 AX APs that are out there need more than that. Then the flavors that these things come in. So I can either get them in 24 port or I can get them in 48 port. Some of the switches, you could even get them in 8 port if you needed to. Perpetual PoE. So really interesting feature, really cool feature that Cisco came out with. So what that allows me to do is if the switch needs to reboot for whatever reason, we're still going to provide PoE power on those ports. So things like phones, access points, if the switch reboots, we do not need to reboot those devices. They stay up while the switch goes into reboot phase. And then the last thing on here that all these have in common is the enhanced limited lifetime warranty. So that's really good if you go, you know, maybe you're not purchasing SmartNet or maybe SmartNet lapses. So what that gives you is when you buy the switch, you get number one, 90 days of tax support. Then in a year, two years, you know, whatever, that the the switch might have a problem, might go down, you need a replacement for that switch. The enhanced limited lifetime warranty allows you to RMA that switch. You call up Cisco, tell them that it's broken, they send you a new switch. So let's get into you know, what kind of sets these switches apart. The first thing we'll talk about is stacking capabilities. So we'll start on the left here. The 9300 supports something called StackWise 480. That's a 400 and giga, 480 gigabit backplane stacking capability. The stacking capability is built into the switch. You don't need anything extra. You just need the cables. We go over to the 9300L. That's a StackWise 360 and you need a kit. So it's first 360 gig on the backplane, but in order to get stacking, you need to actually purchase stacking modules that go into the back there. So when you order that switch, just keep that in mind. Then if we go down to the 9200, that's StackWise 160, 160 gig on the backplane, and you need the kit. 9200L, StackWise 80, 80 gig on the backplane, and you need the kit. Then on the Kettles 1000, that actually does not have backplane stacking capabilities, but you can stack it via the uplinks. That specific switch has static uplinks only. So when you're purchasing that, if you do plan on stacking it, you may want to go with the 10 gig variation on the uplinks. So that way you have 10 gigs between the switch. If you don't and you go with the one gig variation, you're only going to have, you know, one gig between the switch, between the switches there. Next, we'll talk about the uh, uplinks for the rest of these switches here. So the 9300 and 9200, those can be purchased with modular uplinks. Really nice feature. So you might start out with 10 gig uplinks today, but hey, 40 gigs not too far off in the future, and I might want that capability or 25 gig. So you can actually replace that module all the way to the right side of those switches, pop a new module in, and you went from 10 gig to 40 gig on there. The 9300L, 9200L, and the 1000. You can't replace those uplinks. They're static. They're fixed. So when you're purchasing the switch, you need to buy it with the variation that you think you're going to need for now and the future. Next, we'll talk about some of the routing capabilities in these switches. They are switches, but they can actually also route here too. So 
I put in here advanced layer three, and that's pretty much the same thing between 9300 all the way down to the 9200. And what I mean by advanced layer three is that you can do things like OSPF, EIGRP, RIP, you know, those types of protocols are supported here. With the Catalyst 1000, you can sort of route with it, but it's only gonna be static routes. There's no advanced routing capabilities that are able to be purchased for the Catalyst 1000. Then we kind of get into the subscriptions and the licensing models for each one of these switches. So the 9300 down to the 9200L, they come with a perpetual license. So you can either get them with Network Advantage or Network Essentials. Network Advantage is gonna give you all those, those fancy routing protocols. Network Essentials is gonna give you maybe more of the light routing protocols, you know, things like that. There's a data sheet you can go through and it'll, there's a nice checklist, checklist box that'll show you what you get between the Advantage and the Essentials. That's your perpetual. You buy the switch, comes with those features on there, they never go away. Then on the 9300 to the 9200, you also are, re are required day one when you buy the switch to get a subscription on them. Don't get too carried away or don't get too worried about the subscription. You know, you don't necessarily have to renew that if you don't see value in the DNA subscription that you have to purchase. So you have to either purchase DNA Essentials or DNA Advantage with it. Really cool stuff. I do encourage you guys to check that out. If you do have a DNA Center appliance and there is a DNA cloud version coming out as well. Uh, but that's that's a really good stuff, really good management platform for your switches. But if again, if you don't find value, you don't actually have to renew that that subscription. And then on the Catalyst 1000, there's no sort of concept of a subscription because you can't actually manage it or monitor it inside a DNA center. Next, we've got the NetFlow capabilities, so 9300 down to the 9200L. Those all support full NetFlow on all their ports and uplink ports. But then you get down to the Catalyst 1000, that's only going to support S-Flow. That's a sample type of NetFlow. So still good for things like, hey, I just want to get statistics. Where's the majority of my traffic going? S-Flow will be able to tell you that, but you're not going to be able to get every single session, what's going on, security threats, that type of stuff. Uh, you have to go with a switch that supports full NetFlow in order to get that. Next, we move on to the operating systems that are on each one of these switches. So the 9300s through the 9200Ls, they all support iOS XE, and the Catalyst 1000 still supports iOS. So if you guys don't know what the differences are between these, iOS XE was a new operating system that Cisco came out with, I don't know, seven years ago, whatever it's been now, and it's a modular operating system. So with the old iOS, if I wanted to do a update on a portion of it, I'd have to replace the entire operating system. It's very monolithic. If a process crashed for whatever reason, I couldn't just go in and restart that process. I had to probably reboot the entire switch in order for that to work. With iOS XE, it's actually running on top of Linux and I can restart different processes if I need to, or I can upgrade different processes if I need to. Now you'll notice there that the 9200s say iOS XE Lite. The reason that those say Lite is because they do not support something called containers. On the 9300s, I can put containers on my switches and I can actually load applications on them. I might wanna put Wireshark on there, or maybe I wanna put a wireless LAN controller on there. I can do things like that right on the switches and use the CPU and the memory that's in the 9300s to make that happen. Next, let's roll into DNA Center. So DNA Center and SD Access, Software Defined Access, supported on the 9300s all the way down to the 9200Ls. And like we talked about before, no sort of subscription, no access to DNA Center. So again, not supported on the Catalyst 1000. Now we move into the redundant power supplies. So RPSs, 9300 down to 9200s, you can get them. There's an extra module slot in the back. You pop in the redundant power supply and you've got redundancy there. No sort of that, no such option on the Catalyst 1000. M gig capabilities. This is one of those gotta have features. All the new access points that are out there these days, they all support over one gigabits per second. So instead of having to go and run 10 gig out there or anything like that, and you've got old older Cat 5e cable and you still wanna use it, you can use M gig. M gig is multi gigabit ethernet. 
And now I can get two and a half gigabits per second, five gigabits per second to that access point, even on older Cat 5e cable. You need that for anything that's 802.11 AX, any of the new standard stuff that's out there. Then we move into encrypted traffic analytics. That's only offered on the 9300 series switches. And what that does, and if you guys haven't seen a demo of this, you got to check it out. It's probably one of my favorite features on the 9300s. But that looks at all the encrypted traffic on your switches, sends it over to StealthWatch, and StealthWatch is able, in part with the 9300s, to tell you if there's malicious traffic, even if it's encrypted. Huge, huge. You can't, you can't do that anywhere else inside your network unless you have those 9300 switches. So if your traffic is being encrypted, and you may not know it's encrypted because there might be some malware application on there that's encrypting the traffic and sending it out, or maybe it's even staying local, ETA will allow you to figure out if that stuff is actually malicious or maybe it's, maybe it's actually safe. Containers, I kind of talked about this when we talked about iOS XE. So containers can be possible with the 9300s. Again, you can load up applications such as Wireshark or Perfmon if you wanted to. And then because they support containers, we can do the embedded wireless controller in here. So that's the 9800 wireless controller. You can load that right onto your 9300 switches and you don't need another wireless controller out there for a branch office, let's say. Then we move into the UPoE. So we talked about PoE Plus, but what if I need more power than that? What if I'm doing PoE lighting, let's say, or maybe I need to light up a monitor. UPoE allows me to get 60 watts of power per switch port, and that's only supported, again, on the 9300 series switches. But that's not even the latest and greatest. The latest and greatest that's out there for power over Ethernet is something called UPoE Plus, and that'll actually give you 90 watts of power per port on these switches. Again, only on 9300s. I've started to see this becoming uh, a necessity when you really start to do power over Ethernet lighting. A lot of times you daisy chain lights together and you need to pull more than 60 watts of power. You need to get to that 90, 90 watt range. You need UPoE Plus in order to do that. Then one of the last things on here we we'll touch on the 9300s is stack power. Only available on the 9300, not available on 9300L. What stack power is, is I've got my stacking cables going on the back side of my switches. But let's say I didn't buy a redundant power supply for each switch. And let's say I've got a stack of three to make it simple. I can put a redundant power supply in maybe the top switch and stack the power cables together. If I lose a power supply and, let, and let's say the bottom switch, that switch can actually stay up and running without any power supplies inside of it that are working. It's going to draw power from the other two switches that are in the stack and that redundant power supply. Really cool feature, really good feature for people that need to make sure that their access layer is up 100% of the time. And then the last one in here, I kind of went back and forth on whether I thought we would need to talk about this because, again, this is more toward the access layer. You don't really run BGP on the access layer, but it is one of those, those features that comes up time and again where people might be using this as more of a Swiss Army knife and they, they're going to have internet connectivity plugged in and you need to do something with BGP. So if you need BGP, the only one that's going to support that is the actual 9300 switch, not the 9300L and obviously none of the rest of them. So guys, with that, I hope you kind of figure out which switch would be right for your organization. For me, you know, it's a clear winner, 9300. It can do everything. I made an entire video on why the 9300 is the best switch that ever existed out there. And I still don't think any competitor is close to even touching that thing. It's just ridiculous what that, what that switch can do. So again, I hope this was beneficial to you guys. If you like this video, if you like this type of thing, let me know in the comments. Give me a thumbs up. And if you want to see more of it, let me know. Say, say something else. Tell me to do a video on, on another project. So with that, I'll let you guys go. Thanks a lot for watching.